This month in world hockey, we look forward to the game's showpiece event, the Men's World Cup. We get up close and personal with the charismatic Santi Fresher. Can Sohail Abbas juggle Pakistan to their fifth World Cup title? The Black Sticks, will they be the dark horses? And finally, we catch up with the great Jamie Dwyer, the pocket rocket from Rockhampton. After finishing third in the Sultan Aslan Shah Cup earlier in the year, India were looking to regain their place among hockey's elite. And things were looking good for Vasudevan Bhaskaran's team until a bizarre accident ruled out star drag flicker Sandeep Singh just two days before the departure for Europe on tour for the World Cup. A stray bullet fired from a police officer's gun in a crowded train smashed his hip and cost the 20-year-old a chance to play in his first ever World Cup. Why a police officer had to clean a loaded gun in a speeding train filled with passengers is a question that's yet to be answered. But one thing is clear. For India, this has turned out to be a crushing blow, though the players are putting up a brave face. I think all the guys are disappointed for him, but the, still the moral and the spirit of, uh, of the team is really good till now also. The Sandeep Shinari, we are pre disappointed for him, but we can't say, give the excuse that we are, can't give the excuse same thing that Sandeep is out of the team and we can't go and play over as a bad thing. This is not the first time an Indian penalty corner specialist has been knocked out in tragic circumstances. Just three years back, Jugraj Singh, who was emerging as one of the most talented flickers in the world and was India's top scorer in his last two international tournaments, was involved in a car crash that he was extremely lucky to survive. Despite his absence, India did manage to win the Asia Cup and book a place in this World Cup. The team emotionally dedicating their win to Jugraj. Indian fans are hoping for a similar miracle this time around. All is set for hockey's marquee event, the BDO Men's World Cup in Mönchengladbach. The top 12 teams have been divided into two groups and they'll go head-to-head -head for the biggest prize in the sport. The Kookaburras are hot favourites to add the World Cup to their Olympic title and reaffirm their status as one of the greatest teams of all time. The Netherlands are on a hot streak, having won their last two tournaments, and with the great Toon de Neuer leading the way, they could well upstage the Aussies. Defending champions Germany want to give coach Bernhard Peters a memorable send-off, and playing at home, they'll be tough to beat. Spain have the firepower to upstage the best in the world, and there'll be no shortage of skill and passion as they look for their maiden World Cup triumph. Four-time champions Pakistan may have misfired in Terrassa, but you can write them off only at your own peril. India are on the upswing after winning bronze at the Aslan Shah Cup, but do they have the class to mount a realistic challenge? Pan-American champions Argentina are looking to spring a few surprises, but they'll need to rise to the occasion to win a medal. Korea may no longer be the force they used to be, but with their speed and counter-attacks, they can still upset a few calculations. With their unexpected win in the World Cup qualifiers, New Zealand have served notice of their class, and they'll be looking to recapture the spirit of 76. The African champions are keen to improve on their best ever World Cup showing, 10th place in 1994. 1986 finalists England have been consistent performers in the tournament, but can they sneak into the top six this time? The Japanese were the last to qualify, and they'll be happy just to mix with the big boys. A 
victory or two would be a bonus. Pressure. But strength from Santi Frecha, surely it can go. Yes, indeed. Santi Frecha. Terrific strength there on the ball. Santi Frecha is Terrassa's most famous son. At 23, he's already rated as one of the best players in the world. Powerful, confident, skillful, and blessed with a great turn of speed, Santi is Spain's most lethal weapon, as his rivals readily testify. He's, he's got everything. He's, he's quick, he's skillful, he's, uh, his goal shooting is amazing, he's got penalty corner flicking, he, he's pretty much a complete package. Coming from a family steeped in hockey tradition, Santi was always destined to play the game. Four of his uncles had played in the Olympics, three from his mother's side, one from his father's, while his grandfather was one of the founders of the athletic club in Terrassa. With a pedigree like that, it was no surprise that Santi and his elder brother Oriol, who made his debut in the Terrassa Champions Trophy, were soon pushed into the game. I have the, the best ones here. They started when they birth. In the same moment, my uncle and an umpire from Terrassa uh, give the first stick. One day he has the stick in his little bed. Hockey in Terrassa, uh, we have hockey in the blood. It's kind of a tradition in, in, in my family that uh, once you, you, you are born, um, Somebody, uh, uncle, friend, friend of your friend, uh, give you a present and this present is a smaller stick. While his skills were apparent at a very early age, Santi found the going a bit tough and success did not come instantly. When he was five years or seven, six years old, I saw his uh, great player. And Oriol, in the first time, all the matches once because he has a good players and a good team. Santi was a little a player not too good from the other, but they lose all the matches and he cried, I don't win nothing, I don't win nothing. Don't be worried. Continue uh, playing hockey and you will will a lot of, of, of tournaments. Eventually the floodgates opened, success arrived, and he quickly progressed through the ranks. But he was such a complete player that it was difficult to identify his best position. I, start, uh, I first started in the defense when I was uh, maybe 12 years old. Then I passed to the midfielder. And then I started uh, playing uh, striker when I was 18. But I think uh, in the under 21, I was uh, in the midfielder and in, in the forward. And, and Salva Indurain, I think, uh, bet me uh, for a striker because uh, he, think that he thought that uh, it was my position. And I think uh, he was right. Not only is he one of the deadliest strikers in the world, he's also one of the world's greatest exponents of the drag flick. I start uh, with the ball, a stick and a field, alone in the field. Uh, and just try, I saw the... Um, I was seeing the, the World Cup in Utrecht, uh, when Bram Lomans uh, was amazing. I don't know how how many goals I scored in that World Cup, but seeing the the drag flickers uh, starting with this technique and just try to do my best uh, drag flicking. But uh, the the difficult thing is uh, to to mix the being a striker and a forward and at the same time being a, a drag flicker. This the it's hard to combine because uh, uh, sometimes the, 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 the penalty corner is time to, to stay relaxed and to see the penalty corner. And, and for me, no, for me, it's, it's time to be concentrated 100% to, 
to with the technique and try to to score a goal. Santi is unique in that while most penalty corner specialists count practice as the biggest virtue, he hardly practices the set pieces at all. I am not practicing uh, so much because I had an injury uh, last winter. So now we are. Uh, I change a little bit uh, my technique with Tom Sidman. He's our uh, dra drag flicking uh, coach. And I have just uh, 10 penalty drag flick uh, per, uh, per season, and that's all. Whether they come from open play or from set pieces, Spain will be looking to Santi Pressure to provide the goals as they set out in pursuit of their maiden World Cup triumph. After the break, we meet the deadliest marksman in hockey. And will the Black Sticks rekindle memories of Montreal? Stay tuned. Olympic champions Australia remain on top of the Sahara World Hockey Team rankings. Despite finishing fourth in the Champions Trophy, they stay ahead of the winners, the Netherlands, by 57 points. Germany, who are looking to defend their world title, are third. A bronze medal in the Champions Trophy at home helps Spain remain fourth. Pakistan hold on to their fifth spot ahead of India, who finished third at the Aslan Shah Cup. Argentina move up two places to seventh, while Korea drop down one place and are eighth. New Zealand, who won the World Cup qualifiers, retain their ninth place, and South Africa round up the top ten. Netherlands maintain their top spot in the women's Sahara World Hockey Team rankings after a bronze medal in the Champions Trophy. Despite finishing fourth at Amstelveen, Argentina hold on to second place. Eventual winners Germany moved to third position, replacing Australia, who recorded their worst performance in the Elite 16 event. China's silver medal sees them close in on Australia by 51 points. New Zealand hold on to sixth position. Korea are in seventh spot, and they're followed by Japan, just 95 points behind. England, winners of the World Cup qualifiers, take ninth place, with Spain completing the top ten. Pakistan's chances of winning their fifth World Cup have brightened considerably with the return of world hockey's greatest marksman, Sohail Abbas. The penalty corner specialist who decided to bid goodbye to international hockey two years back was persuaded to reverse his decision in order to bolster Pakistan's striking ability ahead of the sports showpiece event. When I resigned, I said that Pakistan was going to be my job. In particular, in major tournaments, I was here. And as you saw before, I was in Aslan Shah. I was in the qualifiers. And there was a tournament that was going to be like this. And my department, the federation, the coaches, all said, okay, let's go. Let's show the fitness. I was playing Holland. Despite his retirement from international hockey, Sohail stayed in touch with the game, playing in the highly competitive Dutch league for Rotterdam Hockey Club. But as he confesses, the buzz of playing in national colours is something he missed throughout his brief retirement. उनसे खेलना एक बहुत बड़े ऑनर की बात होती है और मुल्क के एम्बेसडर होते हैं हम जिस मुल्क में भी जाते हैं एक पाकिस्तान का झंडा जिसमें से लगा हुआ होता है तो ये फीलिंग तो कभी आई नहीं सकती ना खाबी में आ सकती हैं तो एक तरह से तो मेरे लिए तो खाबी है कि मैं दोबारा आ गया मैं एक्सपेक्ट भी नहीं कर रहा था आठ साल नौ साल खेला मैं आपने कहा वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड भी किया अल्लाह का शुक्र है मगर मेरे पास कोई मेडल नहीं है तो मेरी तो ये ख्वाहिश है कि पाकिस्तान कोई मेडल ले और उसमें मैं भी हिस्सेदार हूँ थोड़ा बहुत देर वर अ फ्यू पॉजिटिव टू टेकिंग अ ब्रेक इज वेल 
And much as he missed the thrill of international hockey, he has no regrets about turning his back on the game when he was at his peak. I think it's a very good thing for me, because I've been playing continuously for 8-9 years, and I've been playing so much in Pakistan, and I've been playing so much mentally and physically. So I've been playing so much, and I've been playing so much, so I've been playing so much, and I've been playing so much. He confesses to a few jitters as he prepared to get back onto the world stage, but two goals in his first match against Olympic champions Australia soon showed that his ability has not been dulled. Until my story is about two years ago, I was not so confident. I said that I was two years later, then the rules were changed, everything was done. I started training, obviously I was training. But it will take time for everything. I don't have a lot of extraordinary flicks, and I don't have a lot of perfect flicks. I always say that the goal of the flicks is luckily with the prayers. I don't know if I'm going to hit the right or I'm going to hit the left, or I'm going to hit the left or the center. So it's just a matter of luck. He realizes, though, that he still has some way to go before he's back to his best, and he's decided to be patient with himself. Time looks like two years later. I said I gradually improve, karoon, inshallah, and my wish will be that I will make less mistakes and make Pakistan more proud of Pakistan's game. For Pakistan to arrest its recent run of poor form and do well in the World Cup. There is no doubt that hockey's top gun will have a major part to play. Now let's take a look at some of the best goals from both the men's and women's Champions Trophy events. Garcia shoots, scores! Goal number two. And the celebrations down there on the pitch there, led by the goal scorer, Agustina Soledad Garcia. A really, really good strike from a really, really good forward. Certainly, and we've got As goes forward. Still Van Ass into the circle she goes, no angle for a shot, but she pulls it back and it's finished in the back of the net. Sylvia Karras got the ball going forward. It was a wonderful bit of play by Naomi Van Ast that set it up. And uh, Lammers would have enjoyed that one. Breaking ball forward. There's Christopher Zeller into the Australian circle. Zeller, what a goal! A wonderful goal there by Christopher Zeller. Denoyer again. Denoyer, still Denoyer. Oh, what a super goal. Magnificent play there by Denoyer. This is Sergio with the ball. Back in for Polymath on the reverse. Shoot! What a wonderful goal. Polymath. Ranked only ninth in the world, the Black Sticks are still the most improved team on the planet. And after some strong performances in both the World Cup qualifier and the Aslan Shah Cup in Malaysia, the team appears to be in great shape leading up to Munch and Gladbach. It's been a long process though, as coach Kevin Towns explains. We've had a plan since 2000 uh, where we've uh, really looked at a, a number of hockey players and try and build the base of uh, international hockey players in New Zealand. So we started back in 2000 playing Pakistan and Argentina. Uh, we used 30 players during that period and then since then we've uh, had an academy where we, we basically work off 35 hockey players and it's been my job to introduce them to international hockey and get them as much exposure, uh, exposure as possible. And I think the end result of that is that we've got a good mix of players young and old. We've gone through and rotated the old players out from Athens Five of them have recently retired, but our base was sitting there, so it's pretty exciting for us. The core of the team comes from the Hobart Junior World Cup side of 2000, and after years playing together at the highest level, the Black Sticks appear to be a well-settled unit. 
Their recent run of form means that they're the dark horses of the tournament. Their aim certainly is to turn a few heads in this World Cup. I think at the moment we've got a, um, a really uh, strong core of, of uh, relatively young but experienced players. Um, so there's been probably about five or six of us that have been in the team for quite a few, quite a few years now and um, are now taking up senior positions in the team. And I think that experience um, combined with, with the age of our team is, is almost ideal. The breakthrough came in the World Cup qualifiers in Changzhou, hot on the heels of a disastrous Commonwealth Games where they failed to make the semi-finals. Needing to finish in the top five to make it to the World Cup, the Black Sticks surprised everyone, including themselves, to take the top spot in a field that included Pakistan, Korea, England and Malaysia. In terms of uh, China, I think uh, our goal was to go there and get a medal. Um, to be honest, I don't. I didn't ever expected that we would win the tournament. I was just really uh, hoping that we would play well enough to qualify. And in the end, I think we, um, uh, once we did qualify, we then uh, grew in confidence and really, um, I guess, the, the shackles were freed and we could we could really play, um, you know, with the freedom um, that we'd like to play with and we could express ourselves. and And so I think if we can carry that attitude through into the World Cup, I think. Um, that we can expect to, to start challenging and beating teams, the top, top teams in the world, and, and that's really our goal. It was a big confidence boost for a team that hadn't won much for a long time. Obviously, we, we go all the way back to 76. Uh, we've won some qualifier qualifying tournaments, but, you know, you're really talking something way, way back. Uh, yeah, it was a huge lift for the team. It gives them confidence. Uh, they're, they're on top of uh, their game and uh, their fitness levels have gone up and uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of eagerness and anticipation for the World Cup. And now the aims for the World Cup are clear. We want to be in the top four. It gives you an opportunity to go for a, a medal and uh, who knows what happens. Even if they don't finish on the podium in Mönchengladbach, the Black Sticks are sure to win friends with their intensity, both on and off the field. If Australia are to strike gold at Mönchengladbach, one man crucial to their plans is the diminutive striker Jamie Dwyer. Oddly nicknamed Fetus, the 27-year-old from Rockhampton, the hometown of the great Rod Labour, is the Kookaburra's most skillful player and the man most feared by opposing defences. Well, I started off at centre-half, um, mid to mid, mid, and yeah, just became a striker because I was, um, I was fast and I had a few skills to win penalty corners and um, I could score a goal. So yeah, that's probably why the coach put me striker. I, I was going to go wherever he put me, so he put me a striker, so I played there. Having taken to the game at the age of four, Dwyer made his debut for Australia five years ago. Since then, he's become a vital cog in the Australian scoring machine, and his most important strike was the golden goal in the final of the Athens Olympics against the Netherlands to give his team its first ever Olympic gold. Yeah, I don't think you can get much better than that. Um, as a kid, you'd probably dream of stuff like that, and uh, it happened for me. I was very lucky, and yeah, it, was, it is an amazing feeling, and it's something I'll never forget, and I don't think anything can beat that in my hockey career. That golden goal, and the fact that he'd come back from a career-threatening knee injury just a few weeks before the Olympics, earned him the FIH World Player of the Year award. I never really thought of becoming the best player in the world. I wanted to become the best player I could possibly be. And um, just to keep challenging myself and keep improving as a hockey player was important for me. And if you do get a title like best player in the world like I did in 2004, that's just an added bonus. And uh, it was a very hard year for me that year because I'd just come off injury and I played a, very, uh, I played a pretty good Olympic Games. And to be awarded that was um, a great honour for me. 
The Aussies have dominated world hockey over the last few years, and despite a few minor hiccups, finishing out of the medals in Terrassa and a loss in the Aslan Shah final, they will be among the favourites going into the World Cup. We've had a lot of challenges with the uh, Olympic Games. We won that then to be number one in the world in 2005. We've done that by winning the Champions Trophy. And our main goal this year was to win Commonwealth Games. The big goal was to win uh, also the World Cup. We're going to do everything we can and hopefully peak at the right time in September and win the World Cup. If they do win in Mönchengladbach, it'll be their first victory in the event for 20 years and will confirm their reputation as the best Australian side ever. Motivation enough for a team smarting after two successive tournament defeats. And that's all we have for you this time. Next month, it's a roundup of all the action from Germany.